Hi guys, welcome to Sunday Fun Day. We're gonna have a lot of fun. We got a lot of good prizes. Got a lot of good stuff to give out. A lot of a lot of stuff to learn here. So we have uh, Cliff from Fox and Outdoors, Rochelle from Brampton Gardner, and we might have some other surprise guest guests during a live. So this is gonna be a fun, fun live. Um, make sure you guys like this. Uh, share it out. I appreciate that. We have memberships where uh, Joseph's Journey is $19.99 all the way down to Zucchini Club, which is $99. And that helps out the channel by giving out uh, giving out gifts. It gives out, uh, helps me financially. <laughs> it does, it does. Uh, um, and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. So anyway, let's go show to six inches of soil. Then we're going to start our live. So welcome in, everybody. And thank you so much for being here today. Here is the six inches of soil. Six inches of soil feeds eight billion people. We already grow enough of all the human essential nutrients to feed everyone who's alive. Farming is the single biggest cause of biodiversity collapse, the second biggest cause of climate change. Soil is the most valuable resource on the planet and we're degrading it without even realizing. We have come to believe that money is more important than soil. That idea has to change. Regenerative agriculture is farming, that we're producing food, but also farming in harmony with nature. You're working with nature, not against it. The more people see it, the more that they realize that it works. Having a regenerative agroecological system, that is surely the solution. Soils are absolutely phenomenal in the amount of carbon they can store. What we absolutely need now is urgent action from the government. Until you deal with nine retailers who have 94.5% of food sales in Britain, you're not going to have a level playing field. Consumers have a choice. They can decide to buy cheap meat from industrial farms, or they can find farmers that really value animal welfare and the environment that we're farming in. Dad started Regen Farming for the future generations to come, and that was the most selfless act he could have done. The people who are doing this are making big sacrifices. I think the potential is absolutely huge here. These farms really can change the world. It's all about the soil, isn't it, really? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Exciting stuff, guys. I hope uh, you guys could check that out. Um, it's a great movie. People are going out in tears during a movie and thing. Um, it's, it's really touching because, you know, our soil is our love letter to our kids. And um, that's how they describe the movie. And uh, the way we treat the soil is pretty harmful. And as they say, we're in our last inch of soil. And if we're in our last inches of soil. Well, we better start doing something about it and start adding those micros and macros and everything we can to the soil. So we got a lot of people already in the chat. There's 43 people here. Uh, before I introduce our guest, let me just look, see who's in the chat. Actually, you know what? Let's go right to our guests and we'll say hi to everybody. So, uh, Welcome in, Cliff from Fox and Outdoors, and Rochelle from Brampton Gardner. Welcome in, guys. Hola. Hola. <laughs> so gonna, let's see what we have in the chat. We got Dark Lord Men at Purple Tea Beer, Garden State So-and-So, God's Desire for Me. And this is where I should have glasses on, Cliff. When getting old, there really stinks. <laughs> oh, Angela, Angela Wright is here. I see blurs, and I'm like, I've seen that name before. All right, I'm good. <laughs> if anything close is coming up to a name, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> Pull down to Rock Homestead. Welcome in. Uh, let's see. Raven Cat is here. Tammy M. Hook and Rod in Hand. It's good to see Raven Cat. I haven't seen her in a while. Uh, Thrifty Endeavors and Adventures. I see you guys were chatting up there. There's our treasured home, Jay Dixon, Jane Doe, Jersey Twister, Makes Chaotic Gardening, Kathleen Moran, Disabled and Prepping, Me and My Shadow. 
You know what? I, I, I love that I got chaotic after I said chaotic after all these all this time. It's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> but I got to be me. You know, after Mike has won every single time he's every time he's here, he wins. It's pretty amazing. I, I told on Simply, everyone's channel. Yeah, isn't that amazing? I told Simply Jan she should have chaotic, chaotic Simply Jan's gardening, and I said he'll win every time because she's won. That might help her chances. Here. She's won one time in here in five years. <laughs> uh, just I've won a few times. Gotten Shiny. some of my um, dwarf tomatoes. <laughs> I love the dwarf tomatoes. There's Vineyard Chicks. Happy Mac. I still got to do uh, the Survival Seeds video. <laughs> you still haven't done that. This week's a big week. There's Jane Doe. Wow, oh, everybody's chatting up. Dee's Garden Adventures. Butler Family Farm just came back from the Soil Food Expo and are riding on home. Hopefully, you guys had a good time there. I'm looking forward to watching all the videos this this week. This Operation Capsaicin, welcome in, Matt. Good to see you, Helen Ford, Milk and Honey Heritage Farm, Pamela Morrison. Oh, there's 50 people here. I'm trying to get through the list, guys. I'm trying to get through the list. No, that list just keeps growing. It's not helping. <laughs> Canadian Family Life, Deborah Resignalio. I wonder how many names I say wrong. <laughs> raise your hand. If <laughs> yeah, raise your hand. I can't see you guys. <laughs> uh, just Jason Cato and more. I'm not going to say go Mets. This <laughs> is a Yankee fan, I believe. Uh, there's bougie gardening, bougie, rambling with the Brums. Gotta love Scott. Dewey. I had a couple. Of Cliff, you got to go on a cruise, Alaska 25. Michelle, Michelle, are you going on Alaska? Are you going to cruising? I am no. I wish that would be fun, but um, I'm going on a I'm going on a family cruise. Yeah, the family. Mm -hmm doesn't want to go to Alaska in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> you see enough cold weather as it is. <laughs> they'd rather go, yeah, they'd rather go somewhere warm in the winter, so I can't blame them, so. I don't blame them either. Winter? It's dang near summer already. Although last time I went to Alaska was in winter, so. This Chris Shirey baby. Is there much of a difference between summer and winter in Alaska other than maybe like 20 degrees? More like 60, but... <laughs> Yeah. It wasn't bad. I was when I went January in um January, yeah. So January 23. And actually we were pretty mild. So they were like high teens and you know low 20, mid 20s most of the, the two, two weeks I was there. So it was actually pretty good. Quite a bit of snow, but they hadn't um it was very temperate weather while I was there. Um it depends on where you are in Alaska, right? There's like because along like the panhandle and along the coast, I mean, they have some that are like zone seven, eight, nine, um, very temperate. They just don't get super cold because they're right by the water, right? Um, in southeastern Alaska. And then even um, where my parents are in, in Anchorage, four or five, but down farther south of it, it's like a six and all that. But then you go up to Fairbanks, which is where I'm from originally, and it's like a two. <laughs> it's like two and three zones. Brutal. Yeah, no, definitely no need for you to go on a cruise. <laughs> You've seen enough. <laughs> I would love to go. I mean, it would. I'm I'm really looking forward to meeting everybody. It's gonna be it's gonna be a great time. Alaska 25. Yeah. Woo! Um, so with you guys gardening, why? I always like uh, talking about why statements. Like, why do you garden? Uh, what is your why statement? Why do you guys garden? Because killing people is illegal. Um, no, <laughs> I second that motion. <laughs> Although it's only illegal if they see the bodies. Well, I think I think especially coming here to Canada, um, moving up here from, um, just coming out of that you know winter breakup thaw, whatever you want to call it. It's so bleak. Like right now, if you saw my video that went out this morning, I mean it's brown, it's bleak, and knowing that you know putting in a little bit of effort and planting some plants and everything. You can really bring the whole area to life and just watching it come alive. And it's, just, it's exciting. I love it. Me personally, mine was just kind of 
out of boredom because of all the events in 2020. Well, I was going to start and I started 2019. 2020 is when I started kicking it off. And then that thing happened. But yeah, no, I, for some reason, I've always had like a little bit of a green thumb and I'm always really good at just kind of stick it on the ground and watch it not die. So <laughs> why, why not grow it, save some money and especially with produce and everything else starting to get more and more expensive throughout the seasons and years. Let the more you grow, the less you pay. You know, the more time goes, the more important it is to grow own food, especially when you learn what's happening to it and all its chemicals. Like they say, kale. With kale, ninety-two percent have chemicals and pesticides on kale. Ninety-two percent of the kale in the stores, the most nutritious vegetable you get, pretty much in a store, is kale. Ninety-two percent of it is chemical laced. I'd say the same I mean, with cucumbers and zucchinis and all that stuff because they coat it with like a, a thin wax coating or a preservative a preservative coating that keeps them from spoiling while they're de- during transport. Yeah, all this little yeah. things. The reason why you grow, you get your if you're not growing your own, get it from your own farmer's market, not Shoprite or you know any other the main grocery stores. Um, it's just really insane here, where you know everything's about hey, get vegetables, get fruits, get in it. It's all laced with crap, you know? I do so. it because I'm lazy. Um, sometimes I'm like, oh, what am I going to have with dinner? You know, my husband will be like, oh, I pulled some steak out of the freezer. I'm like, crap, what are we going to have with it? And I go in the backyard and I grab a handful of green beans and some lettuce and some tomatoes and some herbs and throw together, you know, a salad or something. <laughs> so Exactly. You, you, you literally can't get any fresher than walking 10 feet, pulling it out of the ground and washing it off. I love having the fresh herbs. It makes uh, it makes making salad dressings really, really nice. You know, we're trying to stay away from, you know, any seed oils and all of that. And um, it's almost impossible to buy any any store-bought, you know, salad dressing that doesn't have, um, at best, canola. And so I'm trying to avoid all of that. So, you know, just getting in the habit of making all my own dressings and stuff. And so the fresh herbs really just bring a real pop to the salads. So I like to do a nice vinaigrette with them. I mean, to yeah, me, you, 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 you're making spaghetti sauce and tomato sauce too. And if you, if me, you grow I, all the right herbs, you got your Italian seasonings right there. A couple yeah. tomatoes, bam, you've got your own sauce. Get some basil. Look at that. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Genovese basil there too, nonetheless. Mm, it smells so good. This is the cinnamon basil. Is so it? this one here, I was talking about it yesterday on Enoch's Live, but this one here. It was one plant, one seedling, and I just keep chopping it as it was getting too tall for my grow lights. And I just keep chopping it and sticking it in the soil. But this started off as one seedling, the same size as the other ones I have in the in the other tray. But I find that cinnamon basil is just, it's a monster. It goes three times as fast as any other basil. It's extremely obnoxious, extremely aggressive, and I love it because it tastes good. And I like using it in bouquets and stuff too. So I also have, um, this is called Jasper Millet. So it gets this really pretty purple, um, like a g- grain kind of. And then this here is Cardoon, which is related to uh, artichoke. Right. And so it has like these really big um, kind of silvery green foliage. And then it shoots up this weird um, bloom on it. And it's it's edible. And then I have some of my... Um, Ah, mahogany splendor hibiscus. That's what that is. And if you watch Nicole at Nicole Smith Gardening, she planted hers out and hers are like dark red. So I don't understand like why mine, I think it's because mine are under grow lights and hers have been outside. So the fresh light. Um, okay. Hold on. Yeah. It should be under like, like hers, like Nicole's. That's interesting because of the grow light. I, I think so. I think because hers has been out in the sun and I think that's changing it, but we'll see. <laughs> we are so, seeds are from different places too, so it could just be uh, slightly different varieties. But and then I have here that I keep cutting. So it's just like I just dumped a ton of seeds in here. I was supposed to use it. I was planning on using it as microgreens and then they got out of control. So I just keep going in and chopping them down and eating eating them. So but that, oh, I just dropped some soil on the carpet. Um, I grow a lot of basil sometimes. 
but that's like I have large leaf basil in there, lemon basil, some I did not put cinnamon basil because I know it's obnoxious. And um there's some parsley in there too, I think, and some green onions. So I just kind of go in and take a whack of it and throw it in my salad dressings. Well, microgreens are so most of the people have not grown microgreens. It's so easy. And you I know, keep saying I'm going to every year. And especially this fall, I'm, I'm going to do some kind of competition because it's so easy. You could just put on a grow light. It's there in two weeks. You just cut and put on an omelet. Do you guys yeah. eat omelets a lot or not every, really? Yeah. I have eggs pretty much every morning. Yeah. I eat breakfast like once a week. Oh, I make a full breakfast every morning. Except for on the, sometimes on the weekends I take it off because we're not working and my kid's not going to school. So we'll eat lunch earlier and... We'll just have like this morning we had um, fresh fruit and scone. So, but most mornings. So I have chives. It's their third year I grown them. They are starting to get so thick. Yeah. And they look really, really good. I have that outside right that by my door. So when I have my omelet in the morning, it's like, whoop, bring it in, cut, cut with the scissors and boom. Absolutely loves the chives. That's my best advice for people growing herbs. I said, if you're going to grow herbs, I have a friend, they just moved to a new place and she wants to grow some herbs. She doesn't know where to put them. They don't really have a deck. Um, I was like, put them right by your door. Yeah. Because if you have to put on shoes to go get it, you'll never use it. If you're in the middle of cooking and you open that door and you open it, but if you have to put on your shoes and go, you know, even if it's 10 feet from the door, you're never going to use them. It just won't. <laughs> like unless you decide, oh, I'm going to make a big batch of basil or pesto, um, pesto or, you know, I'm going to make bruschetta. You know, you have a big plan for it. And so you go out and you harvest it and bring it in. That's one thing. But just if you're going to just throw it in kind of, a, it has to be handy. That's the same thing with spinach. You know, if it's close to your door, you put right there, man, just cut it and you're damn, you're, you're, you're eating spinach right there. I mean, fortunately, everything in my yard is right there. So <laughs> I don't have an excuse. <laughs> Everything in my yard is over there, back there, over there. It, 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 it's all walking distance, but I mean, it, it gets used a lot. I've got, I have an herb tower that I usually set out here on the east side under the patio on one of the columns. So it's usually got thyme, basil, oregano, onions on there. And that gets used every couple of days. Just take a whack at it and, you know, breakfast, well, not for me, but. For the people I live with, they use it all the time. And so that's essentially why I grow too, is I don't necessarily grow for myself. I grow to, you know, share the wealth, spread the love. And you yeah. know, I Cliff, Cliff, how many how many people subscribe to your channel now? I think I'm at 543 at the moment. Jeez. Oh, Guys, if you have a chance, if the mods can put it in, uh, put it in. Oh, they've please. been spamming my link the entire time. I've seen that thing pop up like 20 times so far. And you know the Your funny thing on it. when I when I started doing when we started when we met Joe I think you were at like one sixty three is when I subbed to you around there and you just took off you like passed me and left me in the dust. It's and you know a cliff is amazing Rochelle is amazing make sure you guys uh, subscribe please uh, it really helps everybody out and please when I'm not going to talk about my live it's any any live we go to if you're in a chat. Just share it out because when Google looks, it's not even just YouTube, it's Google. And they say stuff, share it out. That helps your channel. So uh, start becoming, become like a change, change your mindset where, hey, I'm going to live, share it out. You know, um, right now we're in a lot of financial problems where, hey, people don't have a chance to donate a dollar or any kind of super chat or anything. Uh, so just share it out. That's your way to help out. Uh, everybody else and uh i know i I'm, I'm trying to do it more and more and uh you know just i'm not even talking about my channels whoever you guys want to follow it really helps out and there's miss gail so on uh grow big tv we have six contests and some contests there's not many people who have uh entered sorry i've been lazy i haven't gone back and watched the videos to see which ones i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> you know there's at so, least three that i have to be entered in one of them already done i gotta do the other two i've just been super lazy about filming the videos for the entry fee there's so, so many things going on and i always end up finding out about them like at the last minute and i end up either not being able to join or i run out of not know about all, that oh 
they're, they're all still available. And there's six contests. And you got to put all in under the registration video. And when you make a video, you have to use hashtag grow big 24. So when we look up the videos, we know exactly where to find them. Hey, you know, I know you're entering. I'm going to look for, you know, because we have a checklist. So the six contest is the watermelon radish. Uh, then you have uh, the tri- red beet, the Dr. Waichi tomato, the mammoth sunflower, the zucchini, which is a dark green zucchini or fort hook, and a uh, mammoth sunflower, which is the width. And the winners get $100. And second and third place prize gets seeds from either and My Gardener or Mary's Heirloom Seeds. And so, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Not many people give a lot of money out to contests, and this is our way to give back in a different kind of way. So, I cannot grow a radish to save my life, so I'm not going to join that one. Um, they're the, they're <laughs> so easy to grow. Nope. You stick them in the ground and nope. let them do their thing. Nope. They will not bulb up for me. Nope. I grow seed pods like crazy, and actually, I have a ton of seed pods off each plant. I do think it's more economical that way, actually. Um, but no, they do not bulb up for me at all. I blame all the snow. <laughs> it should be easy for you then. It should be so easy. Fairly cool weather uh, vegetable. You would think. Nope. I the I've tried English breakfast. I've tried the little round. I've tried three or four different varieties. I try them every year. I think I've had it like two bulb up in the last like maybe five years. Wow. So Thanks, have- Billy. So the Wickershire Project is here. We have all new, we have uh, seventy two people in the chat. So thank you guys all for coming. Simply Jan Homestead's here. Gail Southern Living. Homestead. See, you can't get home either. Not just me. Robert Bates. <laughs> and if I miss any of you guys, welcome in, guys. Thank you guys so much for being here. So see, and he you- doesn't see anything. I've got no issues growing radishes. They grow like weeds over here when I plant them. Oh, it's crazy. No, it's funny. I've tried. Nope. So gardening with disabilities. I I want to start making this a bigger thing. Do you guys have anything in your community for people that have disabilities to garden somewhere? You don't see it at all. Uh, <clears throat> I, I'm sure they do. Our city is pretty proactive about things like that. I know they have a big senior center that does a lot of gardening and everything. Um, there's a few different garden clubs around, okay. uh, but nothing that I know of. Oh. I just opened a seed bank at the library. So that's exciting. Oh, that is exciting. That's, that is awesome. I went to check it out and I was like, Ooh, what kind of basil? And it just says basil <laughs> and a tomato. And it says beef steak. And I was like, oh, cute, cute. <laughs> She's like, well, do you want some? I'm like, no, that's okay. <laughs> I'll leave that to the people that, that need it because I got everything. But they had like a nice list. They had like arugula, beets, um, bitter gourd, basil, I think a cucumber, a tomato. I think it was about eight or nine different seeds you could go and you can pick three. That's that's uh, that's awesome. You know, we got to start where our community gets involved with things. Uh, and thank you so much, Vineyard Chicks. Thank you guys so much for that donation. Really appreciate it. Yeah, I've got nothing around here for me like that that I've noticed or seen. I don't even know where, if we have a senior center around here. I know we have a YMCA, but that thing's currently under construction. So ain't nobody been over there. Well, Brampton is known as the Flower City. And actually, originally, when it was when the, the whole town, it's it's an older town, but all of downtown was just huge greenhouses originally. Oh, wow. So it was a really growing area. And then they built up, but farmlands were in the green belt here of Canada. So um, they built like right behind our house, that wall there. It was it used to be all fields, it used to be all fields. And they would harvest, you know, wheat and potatoes or corn. Um, now there's houses. So now the corn's another, you know, half a kilometer that way. Now we're still, we're right on the edge. And so, yeah, if I just go down like a kilometer that way, I'm in farmland, you corn, wheat, huge apple orchards and all of that. Um, Tammy oh, lives in Hamilton. Hamilton. That's not far. It's about 45 minutes from me. That's pretty cool. 
There you go. Maybe Tammy can help you grow some radishes. <laughs> Tammy, can you grow radishes? I'm struggling here. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I don't. I don't understand how I get them to go, and you can't. I live in the desert where it gets to like 110, and the UVs down here eat everything, like just dries it all out. But I don't know. Maybe they're because they're like burrowing down into the soil to keep cool. No, Cliff. What is your hardest vegetable to grow? Ooh, ooh, that's a tough one. Hot peppers. Really? The really hot. The hot hot peppers. I, can grow, I got no problems with. I can grow hot peppers. Last year I had um, chocolate scorpion and red scorpion. And yeah, I've grown ghost peppers. I don't have problem with peppers, but I can't grow radishes. <laughs> I have a yellow ghost plant that grows yellow ghost peppers, which are supposed to be fairly hot. And every time I pull a pepper off, it tastes like a bell pepper. <laughs> but I can grow, I can grow ha like jalapenos that are almost as hot as a habanero. For some reason, I, I think maybe you got your seeds mixed up. Because <laughs> I grew one, and it looked like it was should be a super super hot pepper, and I was terrified to try it. So I made my neighbor, and um, she's like, "There's not, it's not spicy at all." I'm like, "What?" And I tasted it, and it's like a bell pepper, but it's called a bishop's hat, and it looks like a super hot pepper, but it's not. So I don't know if maybe you got like a not hot version. I don't know or if, they, they, if they don't get hot enough or too much water. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I I watered a heck out of my plants and like even like I said, my jalapenos, those things came out. I still have a whole bunch of them. Them them suckers were hotter hot? than the Dickens. That's crazy. It's I find that my um my New Mexico six, I grow them every year. I, they're amazing, but there's zero heat. Like there's no heat in my New Mexico six. Nothing. Is it more like a tam jalapeno? You're talking about what that? Well, it's like an Anaheim, like a New Mexico oh, six okay. Dutch yeah, New Mexico. Anaheim. Um, yeah. But they're supposed to have a little bit of a kick. Mine, no, mine do not at all. So I don't know. I've grown Big Jim, which is also a variety of it. And see, Jay had made a good comment last year. There was such a problem with peppers. They had Peppergate. Oh yeah. So Peppergate, a lot of people were growing uh, a lot of peppers that you guys were mentioning. That was exactly right in that genre. So, it, I can't believe that that was it was that big of a mess up. That's unbelievable how many people got affected by it. That was crazy. Fortunately, I had already I saved a lot of my own seeds and stuff, so I didn't. I was not affected, but yeah, I saved all my seeds too. I got tons of jalapeno seeds now. I just been sprinkling them around the yard to see where those would pop up. You know what's weird? I think we just had a little earthquake in. again. Yeah, I just felt, I don't know if it was something, but the house felt like it was shaking a little bit. That or a car just drove into your house. Yeah, a plane just did a drive-by. <laughs> what, what, what are you growing out there? <laughs> it's, the, uh, it, it's a repeat of Y2K. Supposedly, all the, everything was going to fall out of the sky. It was weird. I was, so I was at work, and all of a sudden, my computer shaking. And I'm like, and I hear something like it was a truck outside. So I'm like, looked out back. There was no truck next to my office. And I there's nobody moving in our office. There's nobody stepping out. I'm like, I guess it's me, you know? But also I stepped out. Do you guys, do you feel an earthquake? And they were like, yeah. <laughs> and everybody's like, because everybody thought it was something else. So that was interesting because it was a, uh, it was only a 4.8 New Jersey, but we don't have earthquakes here. So that was very interesting being in, in an earthquake. Yeah, yeah you know, of course, you're like, wait a minute. Is this is this actually... We had one here a while ago, and it wasn't very, very strong. But I remember when, when I was a kid back home in Oregon, we had one that was pretty... Jersey Twister lives right next to me. She says she didn't feel anything but now, but I'm cleaning up outside. So... It was interesting because they were saying the one on Friday, they were saying like people that were walking on the sidewalk didn't feel it, but people that were in buildings um, were more likely to feel it. So where my parents are out there in Anchorage and they had that huge devastating earthquake back in 64. And uh, so their building ordinance that the, the building my parents are in, it's built on a roller system. Mm -hmm. So when earthquakes come, the whole thing just goes so with it. So I was on the phone with my dad last year, I think it was, and he's on the fifth, fourth floor. And we were talking. He goes, whoa. 
<laughs> so you feels it a lot more um you know my mom was down on the second floor um and she didn't feel it at all and he, she was in a different building and he was up where the dining room is and he could feel it really rocking so so i want to show you guys a short quick and uh i laughed my butt off when this when i did this i thought it was comical and everybody, I guess a lot of people jumped on the first one, but not the second one. This is Rambling with the Brums. So uh, I'm going to play this quick to make you guys laugh a little bit. This is one right here. The bird is like, how did I get here? And who are these weirdos? <laughs> Everybody jumped on the first one. I used the second picture on a different song. And I was like, oh, this is perfect for Scott. Scott needed a laugh. <laughs> it was like the perfect timing for it. <laughs> and I, somebody else made that picture for him. So it just kind of worked out. Technology today. Oh, one second. What did Jersey Twister say? New Jersey gave me an exciting birthday. And happy birthday to Jersey Twister. I felt it on Friday, but assumed to be either a bomb testing or a little lion army plane. Yeah, what a what a twister that was <laughs> for Jersey Twister, and happy birthday to you! I'm so, checking the U.S. Magnitude website, and I don't see anything recorded in Jersey. Okay, good. In the last few minutes, so I will report back. Awesome, thank you for sharing that. Um, you know what? Since we're here, let's we're gonna give out a couple of these books. Okay. It's the Herbal Handbook. We're going to give three of these away out quick. And so I got three of these. Let me just do the wheel quick, and we're going to come on back. So uh, I don't actually particularly think I have that particular book. So make sure I, if you left a comment, you are automatically put on a wheel. And if you are a member, you get extra chances. So anything above... Uh, uh, the Jelly Bean Club, which is four ninety nine, you get put um, automatically put on again after you leave a comment. So that's like two comments. So let me keep on shuffling. Okay, here we go. You got to be in the chat to win. Only if you are a Joseph's Journey member, you automatically win the prize. Okay, here we go. Okay, action. Sifting some soil and more. Congratulations. Woohoo, Mona. So Mona is a Joseph's Journey member, so she automatically wins. So congratulations to Mona. Okay, next one. Uncle Al, congratulations to Uncle Al. I don't, I haven't seen Uncle Al in the chat. Yep, I haven't seen him either. So, congratulations to Uncle Al. Here we go. Thrifty Adventures and Adventures. They they were in the chat in the early in the beginning. So if you are in the chat, you got to say, uh, I want it. All, you know, something like that. So we know if, and if you want to give it to somebody else, give it to someone else. Yes, they are here. So congratulations. 
uh, thrifty adventure, uh, thrifty endeavors and adventures, make sure you email me and, uh, I get you out your prize. So congratulations, thrifty adventures. All so right. They're here and yes, please. Awesome. So we got some other good stuff to give away. Uh, we're giving this away to something a little different, a little greater. Cheese grater and a grill scraper. Um, you never have too many wines, always in the dishwasher when I want to use it. <laughs> yes, um, ice scoop yarn because I like to give a yarn away. Oh, got a, a pound of love. I'm okay. a lover. Oh, that <laughs> look like a pillow. Right. <laughs> so we're gonna give these away a little later. We got another. I like giving away the ice cream yarn, the big scoop. Let me see. I have this shirt from Harry Potter. It's a size large, I think. Who's not over here grooving to the uh, polka music? Gotta love the polka. Eighty-four people in the chat. Thank you, guys. And when I this is a size large when I give it away, so that's what it is. If anybody wants to buy a garden state gardener shirt, I only have two mediums. If I can't find them, I gotta find them. I have no idea where they are. <laughs> I'm definitely not fitting in that one. <laughs> that's gonna somewhere. be uh I try wearing a medium, that's gonna be ten pounds of uh in a five pound bag. And if anybody wants to buy some you definitely see me in it. <laughs> Sounds like a perky situation. <laughs> <laughs> I got a uh, stitch markers, and if a uh, set of four, you get a shovel. Oh, those are so cute! You can make earrings out of those. Uh huh. I'd make a charm bracelet out of that. That's cute. Oh. I like this. Where is it? This way. I can. A sunflower. Aww. And this other one. I go to shovel. You have shovel, yeah. watering can, sunflower. Wasn't the other one a little rake? I thought the last time we saw those, was, I, I swear one of them was like a little, those no, little three kind of well, anyway, there's four of them. Butterfly. <laughs> Xander's still over there waving. So if you're interested in that, email me, and I appreciate that. So all four is twelve dollars, and uh, I teamed up with Ladybird Loves, and she actually made them for me to give away, and uh, I think it's a pretty awesome prize. All right, so congratulations to the uh, three winners. Uncle Well has to the next. Probably a couple more minutes before we give other stuff away. Um, I tell you what, I got this stuff and I can't wait to use it this year. It's called One's Grow Dots. That's what this is. I was the hmm. person who showed me this is I'm going to. It's like fun dots for plants. Yeah, fun dots. And it's really good. <laughs> He's, uh, I might uh, partner up with this company and they give me. And it's like a lot of aquaponics and stuff. And, oh, cool. Uh, let me see. I know this is terrible. You're not going to see anything. I see sulfur and copper. copper. But that's the program. So it's a, uh, is that 16? 16, 8, 11. 11. Yeah. yeah. 16, 8, 11. But also added calcium and magnesium. And sulfur and everything else but this is supposed to be really awesome um this is a whole year's worth of new right there you know so you can't beat that and this is other stuff because i'm big on microbes this year my biggest thing is getting add adding microbes to your garden and i see seen serena so welcome in serena and it's called recharge and it helps with the microbes in the garden but this stuff will bring your plants back in a very fast period of time. So this is really cool stuff. That's cool. stuff added in there. I just had it right on me, so I wanted to 
Um, so what do you guys look? It even has molasses in it too. Humic acid, amino acid. Potassium. That's a good source of potassium. Is um. Yep. And how's kelp in there too? Mm. I mean, this is really, really good stuff. Stronger plants within forty-eight hours are use this. So if something happens and something's not doing well, forty-eight hours. There's your clue. <laughs> there's your. Uh, Solving some issues in the garden, which is pretty cool. What do you guys like using for fertilizer? Whatever's on sale. <laughs> I can't. Perfect. That's, how about you, Cliff? Combination of random things, but most of the time it's just going to be um, like the Miracle Grow uh, food pellets, kind of like that comes in a little green pourable jug. Oh, the shake one. The yeah, the shake and feed. I use that out in like the garden, but the flower. It, it's yeah, like I'm like using that stuff. I'll mix it in with my soil along with uh, that and a little bit of like bone and blood meal, uh, bone and blood meal, Jesus, just to give it a little bit of a boost. Yeah, for my veggies, I like the Promix. They have like an organic Promix tomato. Yeah, I've got, I've got that one too. Yeah, so at the end of the season, I stock up on stuff, and that's what I use. <laughs> I'm not like super particular about it. So on Grow Big TV, within the next two months, we're going to have this guy. He's one of the top soil experts in the world on. He was neighbors to MicroGrow, the owner there. So this guy was pro MicroGrow his whole entire life. Well, not anymore. And he's going to tell you why. And the results and everything else on why he changed from fertilizer or MicroGrow to becoming a soil expert and to where he is today. And um, I hope you guys can check out that interview. It's going to be, it's going to be pretty cool. And you're not going to be, I don't expect to see micro grow around within 10 years, or they just have to change their mindset to change things because fertilizers is not going to be there in a the world anymore. It's going to be changed, totally changed uh, because they're starting to change their mindset to things. So, uh, I got a worm farm, but I haven't had it set up yet. So I'm trying to find a good source of worms. I don't want to spend a hundred bucks on the worms. <laughs> That's what I'm seeing online right now. So it's like, okay. If you have a healthy, if you have a healthy soil, you have a healthy plant. If you have a healthy plant, you have a healthy you. And when your when your uh, soil is not healthy, you get more disease, more rodents, more everything else in the garden, and a lot of that is from the using too much high strength fertilizer and other things with it. Um, people argue that fact, but the results are coming back pretty profound right now, what we have in our soil. So um, I'm just trying to get ahead of the game. And that's what we're trying. That's one of the reasons why we started Grow Big TV is we're getting ahead of the game before everybody else does. So uh, it's a scary world out there, man. Uh, ocean right now is so acidic. Everybody's like, why are these dead fish coming out and, you know, right to the ocean right now? It's because the ocean's getting depleted, you know. So, sorry to scare everybody, but, you know, we got an eclipse coming. <laughs> it's the end of the world. It's the end of the world. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, have you guys used glyphosate? No. See, I have. I have had it. I have used that in the past, and uh, definitely not anymore because you don't have to. It's just, no, like, yeah. you know, um, a long time ago, I used to use all the time. Hey, no weeds sounds good to me. <laughs> I love the, my father was hardcore. Get the shovel out. Get on your hands and knees. Get those freaking weeds out. You know. Yep. Go out there and pick them. You know, then you, you're young, you're 22, 24, five years old. Shit, I can spray the shit and don't have to bend down. Sounds good to me. But that's, you know, that's part of our country. Everybody's trying to get do things the lazy way instead of listening. I'm in to my 40s and I'm still outside picking weeds out. I'll, I'll go down there like a little claw, grab them and just yank them right out the ground. Dirt them all, <laughs> I don't care. And I just pile them in an area and then when I get a big enough pile, I rake them all up and I chug them in my compost bin. They've uh, outlawed a lot of um, fertilizers and weed killers here in Ontario in the last 10 years or so. So it's really hard to get any anything that will work um, in the garden for weeds and things like that. So 
Smart. Unless you are golf course. <laughs> yeah, it makes you think. What did he actually use? Yeah. Hey, There's welcome in. Music. Welcome in, uh, Tuber Chat. Welcome in. Welcome in. Who else just came in? A couple other people just came on in. There's David Gray. David's been David Gray's been here for a while. Um, well, if I missed you guys, welcome in. Thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, there's 770, 77 people in the chat, which is awesome. It's getting crowded. So beating the world in the community. That's some weird. I'm in a belief we should be feeding ourselves because we have so many homeless. Let's worry about the homeless instead of feeding the world. That's the way I look at it as no, there's nobody that lives here should ever be homeless or hungry. There's just way too much food. There's too much waste. Uh, other countries, I think we should help out other countries to grow their own food. Not, I think the food we have here should be not chemically laced to feed them. You know what I'm saying? Like if I want to ship something out to California, you should be able to do it within 24 hours. Shipped, bam, here's your food. You know, it should be a different kind of way. In Canada, you know, every everything should be within 24 hours sent over. But we could also help them with other ways to grow things. You know, everything's grown in greenhouses. Look at the oh, thank you so much, Kevin. Um uh, Kevin from uh, Tuber Chat, thank you so much for doing that. I appreciate that. And Jennifer Ocean Homestead is uh, she got the new membership, so thank you so much for doing that. Um, I I don't know. We, we can't be sending food released anywhere. So that's the way I look at it. Food grows in your area well. Well, there's a reason why it grows in your area well because it helps with your body and your health. Your health issues. You know, there's warm climates for people in warm climates. There's cold climates for people in cold climates. There's just new, new, different nutrition levels. What do you guys think about that? Well, I, the more local your food is, the fresher it's going to be. Right. And it's going to be picked at peak ripeness, right? Like if I'm, you know, eating produce that's grown locally here, it's picked when it's ripe and I eat it. If it's, you know, grown in South America, they pick it before it's ripe. And so you're not getting the best flavors on it and you're not getting the full nutrition on on um but again i'm not complaining about getting strawberries in january so <laughs> um, own strawberries i can't grow my own strawberries in january though right like you know the ability to have you know fresh fruit year round and basically you can grow you get anything year round is just something that you know humans have have not seen um, before until, you know, probably the last 50 years or so or less, um, has it even been possible, right? Like if you wanted peaches, you had them fresh off the tree or you canned them the rest of the year. You didn't get fresh peaches in November or or whatever, like you can now. Right. So, I mean, in a way it's, it, it, it's, it's nice and it's convenient, but I'm, you know, it's just not a, I don't know how sustainable it is, you know, in the way things are going. So. See, that's what that's that's what I'm talking about. You're getting something that is not supposed to grow in your area, and you get it in a different month. It's not fresh. It's laced with stuff. So we're getting used to laziness again. It's not even laziness. We it's the want, you know. I don't know what you want to call it. Supply and demand. It's but it's chemicals. It's crap on it that's bad for you. Not Should all you of it. I don't think all of it's full of chemicals, but I think sometimes it's it's picked a little earlier, so you're not getting it. You know, it, it's ripening as it's coming. Um, you know, like the avocados. But it's like if I only ate things that are local, I would never get avocados because you can't grow avocados in Canada. <laughs> right. It just scares <laughs> me. If it you're gonna, if you're gonna go on that theory, we're all gonna have to, you know, move to a more temperate climate. <laughs> I mean, you could grow avocado in. Canadian climate, but you'd probably have to have a heated greenhouse. It would be in a greenhouse, and that's you know how is that offsetting you know the carbon footprint as well? If you're doing it as opposed to just you know shipping it up, I don't know how does it you know balance it out. I think having your own greenhouse that you're just using any like even like natural heating to do that is going to offset way more than 
the farmer having to sit out there with a truck running diesel, the tractor that has to go out there with a tra with a loader, the 35 guys out there what not walking around drinking the water and doing their business in the fields because you know full well there ain't no bathrooms out there and those guys are out there for 12, 14 hours picking stuff in the fields. Where are they doing their business? Right there in the rows. Free fertilizer. Whether or not it's healthy fertilizer. There's your, there's your nitrogen. There's your nitrogen fixer, yep. Yep. <laughs> All natural, organic nitrogen. <laughs> organic fertilizers. Yep. You just hope that's not laced with something. They're walking around out there with rolls of teepee, so you know they're just scraping, wiping it on the dirt and picking your fruits or picking your veggies. Well, maybe they're all constipated. We can hope. <laughs> One can only hope. Maybe they go, you know, some people just go first thing in the morning or at True. Maybe they're taking care of their business at home before they go out in the fields. So what has your been your biggest... Or they're using the hose as a bidet. You never know. <laughs> That's a Somebody's long out of things. <laughs> so what's been your biggest su uh, success and failures in your garden since you've been growing, starting to grow food? Radishes. <laughs> <laughs> Not that coming. <laughs> <laughs> Me, like I said, I would say hot peppers for myself, but I'm getting better at growing them. My biggest failure is potatoes. For some reason, I can't get them to grow bigger than roughly the size of a golf ball. Oh, wow. Got to have the salt. Really? Gotta, if you have green sand in your garden, that actually year after year goes in there. It really helps if you have green sand. Or order from Ace Hardware or something like that. They can ship it to you. Um, yeah, you got to have green salt. This one year. Got about three to five pounds, but like I said, they were little tiny ones, like basically like breakfast potatoes. Mm. Just tell everyone you're growing fingerling. There you go. If, if you, you have, have specialty. If you like guys want to, if you guys want to check out a channel, how to grow potatoes, check out Tony from Simple Simplify Gardening, Simplify Gardening, and he'll show you. How to grow huge tomatoes and lots of them. What yeah, I'm, trying to, I'm going to try to grow. I'll uh, use that method this season on the set of potatoes to see what I get. Guten Yardening or Guten Gardening. Um, he's got a ton of potato videos too. He grows them in all different methods and all different varieties. And he's potato obsessed. <laughs> the channel name has changed, um, but uh, Quebec Homestead. Yeah. Mallory, she did some potatoes in a section, and she grew an absolute massive series of potatoes. She was getting potatoes the size of footballs from her garden. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah, And she, it wasn't I, just one. I noticed that she changed her name. I was like, oh, that, oh look at that. Yeah, change it to her eco-life. So, oh, she the one that just changed it like she's going through some stuff? Yes. Okay. Yeah. New path in life, so she changed the channel name. Right. Right. Yeah, she I did some that. huge potatoes one year. Yeah. I've never, I don't really do a lot of the root vegetables. I just don't have room in my garden um, to, do, to devote to root vegetables. So I stick with the higher priced items <laughs> at the store. Yeah. So like the fresh fresh tomatoes and peppers and stuff like that. That's harder. Um, yeah, sometimes guys, root veggies are a pain because they take up so much space. But certain ones, per, they they only grow in like little clusters. So you got like one here, one over here, and it, they take up so much space. But there's so much wasted space in between that stuff could be growing. Well, for me, it's like when they come to harvest to harvest them they're in the stores and i can buy you know a bag of 10 pound bag of beets for like three dollars so it's like i would rather take the space where i would be growing you know that many beets and grow tomatoes or fresh herbs or something like that that costs a lot more in the stores yep. um than the root vegetables for me like the um like i said we we are in a very farm you know dense area there's a lot of local a lot of local produce and everything so so Tony, he just came out with the book like three weeks ago, 
the first day it was number one in the U.S., number one in the U.K. So I had him on our show with a round table. I just want to show you a quick video of his. You guys got to check out this video. The lazy way to grow 450 pounds of potatoes. And I'm just going to show a couple of seconds of this. Except we got a commercial. Oh. So, <laughs> I that's drew the word. 150 pounds of potatoes in the laziest way I know how. And I'm going to show you exactly how I do it so that you can too. I'm Tony O'Neill, and this is Simplify Gardening. Growing potatoes is not hard. You can just throw them in the ground and you'll get a harvest at the end of the season. But if you want a large yield of quality potatoes, then stick around because I'm going to share with you all of my tips from sowing right the way through to harvesting. Let's start right at the beginning with sprouting potatoes. Now, the jury's out whether or not sprouting makes any difference, but I always do for a number of benefits, even if there's no growth benefit. Three of the reasons that I sprout is because, number one, seed potatoes are usually sent out from the suppliers early January. And the issue with this is that we can't plant them before the frost dates. So by sprouting them, you are allowing them to actually stay in good shape. And it's something to do with these potatoes so you don't get spindly shoots. We don't want that. By sprouting potatoes, you're able to see how many sprouts form on the potato. And that allows us to control the size of the potatoes. A little bit more on that later. And the third reason, loads of people get sprouting wrong. They tend to put them in dark areas and they end up with these long spindly shoots. It's no good. When you're sprouting potatoes, what you want to do is put them in a bright, cool frost-free place. The brighter, the better. You'll get short, stumpy roots. That focuses the energy for good top growth when the time comes. 13 years ago, I was looking for alternatives to growing potatoes in the ground because of pest issues, things like wireworm that was destroying my crops. And then for the potatoes that weren't destroyed, I was putting the pitchfork through them when I was harvesting. So um, I was looking for alternatives and that's when I came across these and they are. Okay, guys, you guys have to watch the rest of that video if you guys want to check it out. <laughs> Good but video. Tony is, he's awesome. What a great guy. I wouldn't be surprised if he just pops on his channel a little bit. Um, he spent a lot of our lives in uh, Grow Big TV, um, and he's he's a huge channel. Go so check out Tony; you'll you'll love him. Great, great guy. Um, okay, can I just so, address Jennifer? Go ahead, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, she's talking about loofah. So, um, talk. Okay, don't give up. Don't give up. I started growing loofah. It was several years ago. I was at the CD Saturday, and I wanted to start growing loofah. I asked for seeds found some but when i was asking the lady she goes oh i'm out of lufa seeds but have you tried growing jelly? i was like nope never even heard of it so jelly hit melon it's also known as african horn fruit it's this really spiky orange fruit that tastes kind of like a cross between like a kiwi and a banana it's very good um grows on a very spiky vine so i ended up buying jelly melon seeds and lufa seeds and i started them early vines grew like crazy no fruit on either one Tried it again the next year. Grind, same thing. Four years in a row, I grew these. The vines grew beautiful. They flowered, no fruit. And so finally, it was the fifth year. I was like, this is it. I'm out of seeds. If I don't get anything, this is it. I'm never growing it again. But I'm going to use up these seeds. And I don't have these stupid packets laying around. Didn't I get a ton of fruit on both of them that year? So maybe threaten them. I don't know if they needed the bullying or, you know, whatever. But since then, I've had success growing them. So I don't know. And I'm in a zone five. You mean these things? Yeah. <laughs> Planted three seeds. Got about 10 of these. They're off awesome. of three plants. I chop them up. I love these. I use them in the shower. I made soaps with them for gifts one year. That was the whole reason why I grew them, is basically free organic sponges. Yeah. So and on top of that, it's fun to just give them away to people because they charge an arm and a leg for these dang things at the stores. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. 
And it's just fun to say, oh, yeah, I grew this. Yeah, yeah Gail's been growing them for this fourth year, growing them. Good luck, Gail. I've got tons of seeds. I'm going to need seeds for them. Oh, yeah. You grow one, you'll have a lifetime supply of seeds. <laughs> I've got like a little... I've given some away. I've got stuff ready that i got to mail out for people. I've got probably about 200 just sitting on the floor over here in a little tray. Got more in the greenhouse. I got my personal seed bank back here. I got a little one filled with that. There's probably about 40 or 50 of them in there. Fun to watch them grow. And I grew them in a short time. Like I, I had to harvest them before it froze. And I'm surprised I still actually got a harvest. <laughs> Yeah, they're a really long season plant. My loofah right now, they're actually on the greenhouse, um, but they're probably like three or four feet long dangling around. I had I've had bloom I've had a bloom. It was blooming this week in the in my bedroom. Wow. I was All like, right. slow down. Wait till you get outside. <laughs> <laughs> now the minute you put it outside, it'll probably slow it down a little. Yeah, well, it's in the greenhouse, so that hopefully hopefully it won't affect it too bad, but we'll see. We got the heater going. So so what's been your biggest success in the garden? You guys should always pat yourself on the back for growing something like, holy crap. It's like a zucchini. Like even though zucchinis are a lot of fun to grow, and all of a sudden you grow something and it's like, oh my God, your eyes light up. You Don't know, me on the zucchinis, Joe. <laughs> I'm mad that I, I, I have not done well with the challenge. Zucchini. <laughs> I have not done do, done well with zucchini. Um, I don't know. I would say I'm. I mean, I, I'm surprised how well my peppers do here, being in in my climate. Um, we've had a very cool summer the last two summers, and tomatoes didn't really like it, but the the peppers went nuts. So there were lots, especially the um, lemon ahi were really good last year. The um, the chiroxa was good, and my. Uh, what was the one I really like? Oh, the Sugar Rush. And I don't know if I was growing Sugar Rush Red or Sugar Rush Peach because I had seeds for both. <laughs> and I don't remember which one I grew. They were <laughs> absolutely delicious. Um, you know, and then the herbs. But I don't know. Um, I can't think of anything that stood out as just like, oh, my God, this is amazing. I'd say for me, Sugar Rush celeries are good. They're delicious. They're, they're, there's a bit of heat, but they're sweet and they're fruit. Really a nice mix. Yeah, I yeah, believe I that's what you My biggest success was carrots. Took me a while to start the first batch and I got them fairly small. Tried them again the next year and yeah, I've essentially not had to buy carrot seeds for like three years. And I have four packs of seeds just sitting just on the other side of my door in a container. You let one flower just do its thing, and you never run out of carrot seeds ever in the history of life. And, and they, they, they say true? They didn't cross? No, I haven't gotten any cross on cross pollination on any I've of heard, them. yeah, I've heard if you have any Queen Anne's lace that grows wild near you, then you have to really be careful about it crossing. Oh, I got none of that down here. At least not oh. in my area. We have a ton of Queen Anne's lace behind the wall. <laughs> yeah, I've always been. Yeah, I've yeah never... the big success was, I, you know, she'd always have some kind of pride in it because, I mean, you grew it, you did it. It's something special. My, I think my biggest success was Call Robbie. And Call Robbie, I had no idea how it was going to grow. I know it was going to be like ugly looking, alien like, but man, when I tasted that for the first time, it was like, I got to grow this every single year. And it's just freaking great, this alien like thing and <laughs> cooking it. Because there's, I, yeah, I didn't grow up with it. You know, I didn't know how it was going to grow, what it was going to taste like. And uh, now I'm going to grow that in my garden every single year. So never be afraid to try something new, guys. So this year I'm trying my, again, it's, the chance of somebody creating a tomato or a pepper that really works that well is it takes a lot, a lot of work and a lot of luck. So I'm trying to uh, grow a paste tomato and uh, it's, and it's going to be uh, and it takes years of generations, but I'm growing a 
cows tit tomato and a goat bag tomato. <laughs> and if it works out, I'm going to call it the goat. <laughs> Fine. So if the first one, if the first, if your cow's tit makes it, so that would make it an utter success? <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I the goat back has very little seeds, but it could be a generation thing, you know. <laughs> it could have been maybe the grower had too much glyphosate. <laughs> <Low to speak. laughs> I don't know. <laughs> too much Nicole, that week. Nicole sent me blue ball tomatoes, so there's that. <laughs> like, who names these? Like, come on. Well, they have blue suede shoes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but with that tomato, thinking about it, I wanted a tomato that was a paste tomato or something good for sauces that was huge, which the goat bag is a two or three pound tomato. And so I'm thinking of a well, huge paste tomato, um, well, something that's really good in sauces and giving it out a try. So that's how I thought about that. So I think if it works, Thumbs up. I'm gonna have the goat series. I'm gonna work on a goat series. And but that takes a long this it takes a long time to figure that out. But it'd be comical if it ever comes true and it actually it works out well. <laughs> it'd be freaking funny. Because you guys knew at first where it came from. <laughs> you know, when you do these things, you gotta have everything written down. Somebody's gonna steal my idea. <laughs> um garden trends. What are you guys trending to do in your garden this year, next year? What do you like really like doing growing in a garden? Like what do you guys really like enjoy doing? I'm gearing up for more towering vertical gardening. Vertical. So I got go. um, more containers because I have very limited space, so I gotta go up. Um and I also have over more of the neighbor's yard as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing a lot of flowers in my neighbor's yard. Expanding the, <laughs> expanding the garden bed a little bit. And then I have three big planters um, along the neighbor's fence that I grew stuff in last year. So I grew flowers and peppers. And then I had three other um, that are like three feet across by one foot deep. And I grew um, some cucumber and tomatoes, peppers, um, and some herbs in that over at the neighbor's. Because she doesn't, our two neighbors never go out in the backyard and we do not have a fence between the backyards. So it's open to all three yards and they never, ever go outside ever. That's terrible. They don't care. And um, they just are like, yeah, go do whatever you want. Cause they like to look out at it. So our neighbor next door, he used to have his grass. He would mow it with a machete um, like once a year it would just be this super high tall grass. And I got kind of worried about like ticks and stuff with, with the dog going um, we just maintain it now. She, the lady two houses over pays my daughter to mow it in the summer. And so when she wanted her grass restored, cause it was both of the yards were just in disarray. Um, my husband went out and we like, just, he just covered it with fresh soil and reseeded it. We got her, uh, and a sprinkler and set it all up. And then she pays my daughter to mow it. And now she is like the best grass in the block. Um, but they both enjoy looking at the garden. So the neighbor next door, he goes, whatever he has company over, he just turns his blinds. So if they look out back, they can't see his yard. They can just see mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. And he's from the Caribbean. So he loves peppers and the, 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 the flower. He'll be like, oh, we used to grow this back home. And he was a farmer back home. And so he just has no desire to be out in the garden or do anything. He's an older, elder, you know, he's an older guy too. So he's just no interest. So they are more than happy that we kind of take over and plant stuff out there and maintain it. And it, 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 we have a much larger yard and it's really um, amplified my growing space. I think I got like 20 tomatoes off of that and I'm on an orange rower in her yard last year, like, because they get more sun because they don't have any trees that they planted. So we have trees in our yard and our neighbor to the left of us has big trees. So my yard used to be full sun, but now is it filled in um i have a lot more shady areas and so i just don't get en enough sun in a lot of spots to grow some of the stuff i want to grow so I, it's limited my area even more and you know i'm in a townhouse so it's a very small yard to start with so they're both of their yards is pretty much full sun so we're just planting more and more things over there <laughs> i want to start planting bamboo god no in certain plant it in a container don't plant it in the ground no no oh, no, no. Bamboo's like i want to plant it out back 
they keep no. away from certain things. No. So. No. I know it's it's I know it's a little invasive, but I have certain places to hide. We'll just hide. Throw in some kudzu and have at it. <laughs> it's not as invasive as like mint or ivy, but uh, right. it did. It, it takes a while, but I mean, the, the benefits of growing bamboo is one, you have free material to make any size trellis or however many trellises you want. Garden stakes, flag posts, whatever. A-frames for things, borders. Make a fence with them. I mean, you, you can do a lot of it. might keep the deer out of your property and stop exactly. making... Exactly. Now you got my point. Yep. The guy uh, we had on, we talked about bamboo but he's also a microbi microbiologist and uh, he's big on the soil huge on the soil you got to see this guy's videos it's freaking amazing um everest homes his name is uh unbelievable i'm going to show you a skip it at that um anyway uh he he's in charge of a lot of the bamboo industry and uh it's just absolutely you know there's one billion homes made of bamboo did you guys ever know that? Unbelievable. I'm gonna look at this site. I want to hear you guys listen because he just made a video and I haven't had a chance to listen because this is going to be the first time I'm listening to it. Let me go to his site quick because I think you guys might enjoy this. Uh, just give me one second because I got to go with LinkedIn and set it up. But this guy's absolutely amazing. What a great interview. I think you guys have a chance. Please go check it out. Uh, you can get bamboo to grow just about anywhere. You just got to get it started. That stuff grows like wildfire down here in this area, which is weird considering I live in a fairly dry, hot state. Okay, so this is a short video. This is by Everett Holmes. All right, and if you want to check out the interview, this is only 20 seconds. I'm going to show you a larger one. Okay, here we go. me again in the microscopic realm of compost. Here we witness one fungi engaging in a strategic battle against another. Check out how that hypha penetrates the enemy, branching off inside. Mechanisms like this offer hope for enhanced biocontrols. I was pretty excited to find this. Join me again in the microscopic realm of compost. Anyway, this guy is absolutely amazing. Um, and if you guys, one second, let me go to more videos, because a lot of people have bought worm castings around here, and I, uh, and I got a bag right here, right in front of me, of this bag of earthworm casting, right? Well, here's this product review. Spring. Might be tempted to out there getting ready for spring. Might be tempted to pick up a bag of worm castings like this from Costco. At first glance, it has branding with wording such as honest worm castings, no peat fillers, feed and grow plants naturally. We balance technology with biology. Let's look at what's really going on in here. Yes, it's true. The organic matter, like the humics and fulvics, is there. The beneficial bacteria are plentiful. But unlike biologically complete compost amendments like this, it was missing three of the major soil food web microorganisms. There are no fungi, there are no protozoa, there are no nematodes to speak of. Follow along for more product reviews like this. So, yeah, when you're buying something and you think it's very cool, like earthworm castings, grow your own. <laughs> it's a lot easier. You're going to get in, you know, make your own compost, you know, Burma compost, regular compost. Um, those are little things that, again, change in mindsets. Why are we wasting money going to these stores that you think all this stuff's in there when it's not? You know, you're wasting your money. So, well, that's the whole reason to why you mix. You don't just use the worm compost. You mix it with other things to get a better fertilizer or soil mix, blend, whatever you want to call it. True, but a lot of these things are not exactly what the there's nothing in it. It's like fillers. It's like having a uh getting a what is it called? The meat you buy a uh, fake meat, eating fake meat. And you, see, you know, 
<laughs> impossible meats. And that's all fried. That actually is not good for you. Gross. You know. And uh, let me see who else was here. Uh, Dr. Paula Rupton is here before. And welcome in, Dr. Paula. It's good to have you. Um, yeah. I'm, I've been trying to get into more debating kind of things, like things that are out there and trying to find that what's, what's real, what's not. And uh, it's pretty uh, amazing what's what I've been wasting my money on for years. And now I know why there's not certain benefits in it. Again, you know, we're penny pitching today. Penny, you all start to do the right thing. Get your butt out in there and try to find out other avenues to get, help yourself out. So, guys, let's go uh, to the polka a little bit, and then we'll come back and ask some questions. It's already an hour and 20 minutes into this live, which is pretty amazing. Um, I love to have Dr. Paula on again, talked about a lot of things with food again and nutrition that we eat and the good things and the bad things. But I always tell you, I tell you right from the start, if you have a healthy soil, you have a healthy plant, you have a healthy you. And that's where we got to start is with the soil. Okay. So let's go to the polka. Let's give out some stuff. And uh, thank you for being here. It's 92 people in the chat. I'm going to shuffle, 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 shuffle. Each week we do this. Every Sunday, fun day, 7 to 9 o'clock. We're big TVs on Tuesday and Thursday. We're talking about pollinators on Tuesday. It's a pollinator live. So And uh, Thursday's open chat. So that's what we're doing this week. So, okay, we shuffled. First winner is going to win uh, the grater and the grill. So that's going to be our first win. Then it's going to be, again, you could always choose seeds. We're going to give out seeds in a little bit. And then we have a size large T-shirt in this, which is pretty cool. And if it doesn't fit you, you have to give it to someone else or uh, choose seeds. So that's our second gift. The third lift, the gift is a uh, pound of love. That will be our third gift. And we'll save the other two for an end. So here our first winner. Good luck, everyone. <laughs> So, uh, both on a rock homestead. Mm -hmm. Yay. Congratulations, both on a rock homestead. So, this is what you won. Let us know if you're in a chat. Congratulations. And they should still, they should still be here. I think I see it on a live. This Indiana backyard gardener, our second in prize. Let's, uh, Give out the pound of love. Pound of love. Good luck, everyone. Good luck. If you win in the chat, make sure you tell us that you're here. Congratulations. Suzanne Goulet. Congratulations, Suzanne Goulet. Are you here? Are you here? Hey, there's Annabelle. Welcome, welcome, Annabelle. Right. There it is here. So congratulations, Susan Goulet. You want a pound of love. Okay, this is a Harry Potter shirt. This is a uh, herb herbology. So we're talking about herbs today. So this is a perfect gift to give out. It's only a size large. It's dangling. It's dangling. <laughs> Good luck, everyone. Good luck. <laughs> Only a size large, guys. Only a size large. PJ Scalfo. Congratulations to PJ. I don't think I've seen him tonight either. So, congratulations to PJ. PJ is claiming it. Is actually female. Um, she Ooh. works 
PJ works about five minutes from my work, which is pretty cool. So, uh, congratulations. Go for one. And uh, the Uncle Al wasn't here before, so we're going to give out another one of those books. So, it's the Herbal Handbook. So, good luck, guys. Good luck. <laughs> Deidre Kelly. Peace and love. Peace and love. So congratulations. How uh Mary, I haven't seen her. I gotta give her a call. Because I haven't seen her in a while either. She's donated our channel with yarn in the past too. Pito. So uh congratulations with to Deidre. Or seeing if she's in the chat. I haven't noticed the name, but I didn't. I don't think I've seen it either. So peace and love with Deidre. Let's see if she's here. And I'm trying my best to keep up with the side chat. Awesome. So, what did you guys think of that uh, little movie I put out? Not my movie, but Everest Homes. What did you guys think? That was pretty cool. With the microscope and stuff. Yeah. Pretty I'm, I'm, I can't afford a microscope. I love to have a microscope and see what's in my garden. <laughs> oh, Annabelle's a new member. Thank you, Annabelle. Thank you guys so much. I don't know if I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> People like. I used to have a microscope years ago, but um, we gave it away. I wish. Are some things better left unknown. <laughs> I, yeah, I think so. Goggles in the ocean. Mm -mm. I just really want to know what I'm wasting my money with. But you know what? If you don't have yeah. a microscope, the best thing you do is grow with your own compost. Period. I have leaf mold back there that's been laying there for my well, not mine, but my neighbors. It's been over ten years old. I'm I'm so looking forward to getting that leaf mold before the new neighbor, new neighbor, new neighbor moves in and using mm -hmm. all that leaf mold. I'm get really super excited. Like, don't worry. I'll, I'll help you clear off that back area. I'll take care of that. <laughs> I'll bring my truck over. No problem. <laughs> no problem. Well, all that crap in here, I'll get rid of it for you. But I, I, I do I have... take vacations. Like I said, Joe, I'm, I'll, I'll be over there for like a week, moving stuff around, helping you. <laughs> and I, I go. I, I can I, afford to go. Do not listen to Jan. <laughs> you can always taste your soil. Yeah, mm, tastes like chocolate. <laughs> like dirt and worms. Oh, like yummy! Millipede. Just ask Dexter. What's it taste like? Well, you know, I, I think I have some. Oh, I definitely have some box turtles back there. Maybe it tastes like that box turtle soup back there or something. <laughs> and I have a fox back there too. There's a, I think I have a fox family back there. Well, that's good. They're keeping away all the mice. Oh, Jay, thank you so much. I'm definitely going to do that. I just got to make sure the right kind before I buy because I'm not wasting any money. Right now, I don't have, I have zero money and I'm afraid to look at my taxes because of uh, um, what I have to pay because Uber, you pay at the end of the year. I don't pay every three months. So we usually, I have to pay money. So that's not good. That's not good at all. And uh, yeah, not good. Hug flavored dirt. But Jay, thank you so much. I'll definitely, I'm going to take a look at that. You know, kid, a lot of kids grew up with microscopes. I wasn't, well, I wasn't lucky enough. I was, I didn't have a first computer for our longest time before everybody else did. Uh, my father and family, you're not allowed to have a calculator. Use your head. Everybody else has one. Nope. You're not allowed one. So, you're not going to grow up and have a calculator with you at all times. Yeah. <laughs> you get it. Really? We were lied to. Uh, just get one of those soil flavored jelly beans. Oh, Ooh. I can start my own flavor. <laughs> just brush Ooh, the I, I was going to say, didn't the Harry Potter ones have one of those nasty flavors? 
Wasn't it dirt? I don't think they, I don't think they no, maybe they did have dirt. Yeah, I'm almost positive they had a dirt flavor they jelly. Did, and it wasn't that bad. I would take dirt over stink. <laughs> After you had stink bug, soy, soy wasn't that bad. <laughs> dirt probably tastes way better than uh, rotting fish. Oh. I remember when Joe got that when he about died. Oh. Nothing, nothing beats stink bugs. Stink bugs is the work, worst. Spoiled milk is really, really bad. Yeah, gag. Oof. Stink bug reminds me of like green apple for some reason. Like the flavor they use for green apple. That that's what those two taste like. My football coach said if he ever cursed, he would put dirt in his lip and run a laugh. And he freaking did it. <laughs> Somebody goes, Hey coach, you curse. You gotta put dirt. In your lip and run on and we're like and he did it and I was like oh my god I can't believe that guy did it that 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 was disgusting because it was no soil that was dirt <laughs> and that's that, schoolyard dirt too who knows what's in that now what do you guys use for seed uh, germination what kind of uh what do you guys kind of like to use I use a uh, soil block. Oh, soy blocks. Yep, there we go. I wanted to talk about that. That's the reason why I asked you. Uh, I haven't used soil blocks. Did you, where did you get your soil blocks at? Um, I bought them from a Canadian company called Lee Valley. Okay. And I got them about four years ago now, I think. And um, there's all different places you can buy them in the States. That was the only place I could get them here in Canada at the time. And, um, I think you can get them now all over on Amazon and um, Fiskars came out with a cheaper version. Um, it's not as um, space saving, um, but it's still really great. I have them right here, actually. So my cannas are in the Fiskars soil blocks. So these ones are quite a bit bigger. They're kind of more like a, a one inch mm -hmm. soil block. So you can see there's, it comes down like in a, it's like a cup shape and there's like, it goes four go in at a time. So that's this, there's four in a clump. I'll grab nice. this. I'm going to make a mess. You're going to make but, a mess all over your computer. All over the computer. Yeah. So there's <laughs> two, two groups of four. There we go. Beautiful. What do you, what, what do you like putting in your mix? I just use straight up pro mix or, um, whatever Costco has on sale the for the like indoor potting mix or anything like that. I don't do the fancy soil mix mix. It's like I'm getting the soil out of my keyboard. <laughs> so Nothing with, to see here. with my seed starting mix, again, you don't want to use potting mix. You use but see, that's the thing with the soil blocks, you use potting mix. You don't use seed starting mix because it wouldn't hold together. Yeah, that's true. You get the point. So like, it's a different process, yeah. This is what I'm using this year. Oh, looks good. Yeah, see, I don't have that where I'm at, but I'm also like nine states away. I have well, yeah, I have different varieties of these kind of mix. I mean, I've got coconut core, literally that stuff comes in little blocks. But I use I, I kind of vary my stuff when I do my seed starting. Sometimes I just throw them in the ground outside when it's warm enough and let them do their thing or I'll buy a seed starter mix and add a little bit of pro mix to it or my own soil blend that I've been working on for the last few years. And sometimes I have success and sometimes it's an absolute failure. <laughs> now, what you're going to see as a trend in, all over the stores is a lot of stuff with biochar. And not, oh. uh, all, not all biochar is good biochar. Yeah, I've been it's seeing a lot of, bags around. Yeah. So I'm testing, I had one of the leading biochar experts on my channel. Her name was Kathleen Draper. And she didn't say anything bad about this, which is it's compost and biochar with mycorrhizal fungi. Oh, the yeah, mycorrhizal fungi. at Walmart. Yeah, that's where I got it from, Walmart. So, <laughs> and so I've been adding this. But biochar is going to be the biggest thing you're going to see out there. Um, but you got to be careful. I bought some charcoal. This is about this is regular charcoal, right? So this is like biochar. 
Now, this is a big difference in this. When you have biochar, right? Just like I go, it's supposed to let it's char charcoal, right? This should snap. Well, that one does. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that one. I did this the other day. It didn't break. <laughs> it should just snap and break apart nice and easy. It's light. It's, it's you know, it's charcoal. A lot of these layers do not do that. And uh, you just got to put that over before I screw up. No, I'm not gonna rub my face with the truck all like I did the other day. <laughs> so like, you know, say, like, my, the other, you had a big old black spot right there. <laughs> uh, somebody said it in the chat, Joe. You got stuff on your face. <laughs> Where? <laughs> uh, that was helpful. Yeah, just be careful when you buy. Uh, a lot of people don't activate it. I try to activate activate it in a compost. Or a, a, a liquid compost, um, compost tea, and that's how. <laughs> but your face, oh no! <laughs> I make sure I got to go like this. It's good for your skin. Mm. Yeah, if you guys, if if you do something between this year and next year, really learn how to grow. Uh, no, not grow. Uh, to start using biochar, because biochar. What happens is when you have biochar. And you put it in your soil and you activate it. All your stuff that you put in the soil stays right there. It doesn't release. It doesn't go anywhere. It stays right where you need it. So if you're adding your compost, you're adding other stuff in there, you don't have to do it as often. And also your water, you don't have to water as much. So here your nutrition's there, right? You, your All this drought goes on in the soil doesn't do anything it stays right there if they you have uh storms where you have all this water coming down you flood your plants no it goes right into and stays there you're not flooding your garden i mean so and it's great for the earth so there's just so many reasons to why to use biochar and all your micros or macros they stay there too so what what a great product what a great thought but people think that you could just put a startup fire and there you go. No, it has to be had to it has to be grown, it has to be used the right way and compressed a certain way to, to make it work. So that's a that's that's a really a key. So if there's something you guys can learn this year, you're gonna see a lot of biochar stuff in my channel. I'm following about a hundred people on LinkedIn on biochar, and I highly recommend you guys doing the same thing. Um, so it's really good guys. It's really, really good. And it's, it's something that you should be using years following. Cause it's going to be in a store as you can, well, in the next couple of years, you might as well, you might as well start looking it up, grow your, do it your own. If you can. That's funny. Cause I've been yeah. having charcoal to my soil for years. I, I have a wood fireplace. So whatever doesn't burn entirely, I just chuck it out in my compost beans or in my soil, I'll break it up and just mix it in there and, just do it that way. Now, if you get the the dust, the dust is only certain good. Cert, it's only good for certain vegetables because it becomes very acidic. Oh yeah, so no, I don't. I don't use any of the ash itself. Once it turns white, I don't. I I'll put some of that every once in a while in my compost bin. But aside from that, there I have very few plants that actually require that high acidity. My soil is that way already as it is. Okay. Which really sucks, which is the reason why the only thing that grows in my dirt are weeds and trees. Yeah, here we go. We got Jane and Jay. They're amazing. Everybody here is amazing. Thank you guys for making this a safe place to go to and, and informational and a community. Uh, thank you guys for all doing that for me. Um, so Jane just posted a biochar initiative. Yeah, blueberries. Those are the ones that like the, uh, the like potash. They go nuts. So just be careful because a lot of people, you know, they're not exactly sure how to use it, what vegetables you use it on there, and what the how, you know, how to use it is the main thing. Thank you guys. You guys are great. Uh, yeah, blues berries like ash. Exactly. Exactly. So 
just make sure, you know, it's not all the same. You put all of it in one. No, it doesn't work that way. Oh, you give them too much. You basically do the same thing as like everything else. You give too much fertilizer, too much nutrients. You just burn the roots and then your plant dies. Yep, exactly. Love you too, Molly. And too much of something, guys, is it's never a good thing. You know, does everything's good in moderation? Everything in moderation, yes. Yep. That's what I'm hoping to get this um, worm compost thing going. I hope that. Uh... Oh, Cliff, yeah. Cliff, my book still has not shown up. <laughs> yeah. He ordered that thing like three weeks ago and it still ain't got to his house. But, you know, Molly says, I love you, Cliffy. Yep, got her. People always call you Cliffy. Some I I, I allow the uh, ladies, lady folks, to do it. <laughs> oh, Cliffy! <laughs> Sorry, Joe. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> We're oh. Out. oh, that's too funny. Joe, I I get it the other way, Rachel. I get Joe. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, so yeah, I've been changing the way I'm growing, and I still have a lot of. <laughs> there we go. I thought he'd make you guys laugh. Nice try, Joe. Oh, jeez. Uh... So, um, do you guys have you guys used compost or biochar or anything like that? Compost? Guys, or no. no, I haven't bought like the official biochar. No, okay, not yet. Um, most of my gardening, especially for like food and veggie, is all done in containers, and um. I end up just using kind of the compost pile we have out back, and then I mix in um, the pro mix usually, and uh, manure is usually what I mix in with my veggies. And Butler Family Farm, thank you so much for being a member for five months, and thank you for all the other members. You guys are great. We actually at one point had ninety-two members, and now we're we're half. We got cut in half in the last couple of months because of, uh, I guess society, society, society as we know it, everybody's you know pinching a penny right now, and I totally get that. But Jerry, thank you so much for being a member and everybody else in the chat. And uh, Jerry says, "Hey Jan, you missed me this week." <laughs> Just wanted to point that out. Oh jeez. Um. Container grown. So what is in your mix of containers? Oh, pretty much all of my, anything I eat for the most part, um, because like my fence and our deck was built like with the old pressure treated wood. So I don't like to eat anything that's in within, you know, like a few feet of that for runoff or anything like that. Cause it's probably got all in it. So that's why any of the food that I'm growing, um, because my yard is so small, I don't have room to grow away from it. So that's why I do it all in, in either grow bags or um, containers of some kind. And I have the vertical garden that I have. Um, it's a tower garden on the deck. And then I have some of the stacking like dollar containers, um, things like that to try and, you know, take take uh, space up uh, since that's where I need to go. So even up at the top of the hill, everything pretty much that is in food is in containers, unless it's kind of in the right hand bed. Um, I'll do some peppers and things in there sometimes. And then that's in that's safe there. So that's, that's why I do the containers. <laughs> well, I do containers because the trees like to violate my plants. We got. I have. We have cottonwoods trees down here, and any source of water they can get to, they will send feelers or roots to. And we've had numerous plants that have kicked the bucket because the roots set runner right at the drain hole, and then they spread out. So you get this one root that turns into a net that tries to grow up there, and then it tries to grow a tree at the top of where your planter's at. So I have to start planting things on flagstone blocks so trees can't get up it. So when it doesn't like the dry spots 
So all, most of my planters that I have are now the steel raised bed planters, not the birdies or whatnot planters like like the standard cow trough planters or cattle trough, whatever you want to call them. I have to plant everything in there. I just find it easier to grow in containers because I don't have to worry about the trees trying to violate my plants. When I have, and I grow everything under the sun possibly. I've grown sunflowers, corn, squash, beans, carrots, radishes. Yes, radishes. Radishes. <laughs> Hashtag radishes. I tell you what, when you use containers and grow peppers, it's the easiest way to grow. Hey, Lori's World, welcome in, welcome in. The best way to grow peppers is in a grow bag. Or a I use the stick containers that we used to buy like trees and shrubs in. Mm -hmm. So nice big black just containers. And I'll put two to three peppers in it, depending on the, the type. Mm -hmm. And I put them by the house where we have the brick. And those heat up in the sun and the tomato, the peppers just go nuts. They love it. Yep, exactly. It's, it's it's warmer down below. I love that heat, yeah. And if you have the compost in the bins or uh, the containers or whatever, the roots grow. There's nothing blocking the roots. So if you use the compost with the roots, you start getting the microbes, that's exactly what you want. And they just branch off. If you have crappy soil, you're going to have a crappy time growing peppers. It's yeah. just the way it is because the roots don't go anywhere else. And that creates the problem. So I've learned the yeah, funnel on the uh, soil. Yeah. So I was gonna say the, the the best way to find out whether or not you have good soil that's like either that you know not dead or at least growing, you just dig a hole in there. And if you find a worm, you got healthy soil. That's how I look at it. I see worms because you the, the worms won't touch dead soil. They won't they won't bother with it. They we have lots of worms. <laughs> you got black worms? What kinds of worms. Oh, yeah. I, I guess see, that's the best kind. Of, then your soil is good to go. We have, um, but it's like, it's a, it's very heavy clay, which is nutrient rich, but it's kind of a pain in the butt to dig in. But Yeah, it is. I um, have a mix of clay, sand, and gravel. Hmm. No, Cliff, with your One. situation, with uh, you have to water all the temperature extremes and stuff like that. Oh, constantly. You know, try, you got to start using biochar has been kind of way. It's going to help you out so much if you learn, really learn how to use it because you're going to have less water in your situations where you live is, you know, you're easier. It's easier to adapt for you. The plants will well, I get a lot of free water too. I, um, with the, the way the roof is designed, I have the roof, the patio, and then I have the shed. Uh, we collect about a thousand gallons of rainwater when it rains. Oh, wow. It'll take about one to two days on like, if it's a heavy rain, I can fill every water container I have that one day. So I, a thousand gallons of water is what we have for runoff. Wow. I use most of that to water all the rest of my stuff. But I do a lot of my plants. I will put a heavy layer of mulch on top to keep the sun from drying out the first four inches of my soil. And then on that stuff, I really only have to water every couple of days. To like four to five days depending on the plant itself peppers i'll go like four to six days before i water them again and that's how i was getting jalapenos almost as hot as habaneros yeah because you stress your you stress your pepper plants they get way hot way hot now it causes the some of the peppers to have those little ripples on the outside they don't look as healthy as you you know to eat them yeah, the little like dry cracks on them. Yeah, you got it. It's because they're dry, and then they all of a sudden they get all that moisture, and then they pop. And mm -hmm. I'm telling you, even if it has that that scar on there, they're still fully edible, and they're just just a little extra crunchy. But they still got that heat to them. Um, let me see. No, yeah, that's that was my question with climate because it was climate change. We have climate change issues. Uh, do you guys notice climate change in your situation? I guess so with your streams, or, or has it always been like that? It's well, back in the 80s when I was a kid, we used to get like cold weather, like in the wintertime, we actually got snow, but that hasn't been the case for a couple of decades. 
And it just, I mean, it to me, it just feels like it's getting warmer and warmer earlier and earlier. See, for us, it seems to be like uh, spring and fall have kind of shifted. So our spring is coming later, but we're staying warmer into the fall. Three years, we haven't had a frost until like the first week in November. And we're, my average last first frost date is usually October 15th. And we've had frosts, you know, in the years past come in September, but we would, you know, have it a lot. You know, I was planting out things usually mid-May. And the last few years, I haven't planned the end of May. So it feels like it's kind of shifting. We still have the same season length, but it's kind of just a few weeks shifting the other way. Now, have you got... No, I did have, which which is kind of crazy. Um, some people call them bots, but I this for my situation, it wasn't bots. It was actually people trying to harm my channel. Have you guys had any people trying to harm your channel? No, or I had you? Just myself. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes I kind of step in it. <laughs> uh, I'm not that big yet, Joe. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I I have that I have done I it's hard to even work. I have done my best to promote as many people as possible and when you have to try people try to harm you to make up stuff and write stuff down that you didn't even write or because you know technology today is crazy i could i could have you speak words that you didn't even speak to make it look like you said it and it didn't even happen just to harm you you know People go to extremes and people really got to look at themselves in the mirror a little bit and say, man, man you're never going to grow. I mean, everybody knows my attitude to help everybody out and hope everybody knows that. And it just, and then you have the bots. I, I think there's not as many bots people out there. I think it's just more of people, they want you to fail. People want you to fail. The, you, I think YouTube got rid of a lot of the bots once they when they started running more of their AI programs yeah. during the 2020 scenario. Mm -hmm. So that got rid of a ton of bots because bots tend to say the same exact thing every time they pop in somewhere. So it got flagged as spam, and after a while, they just started deleting the accounts. Now, every once in a while, you will still – I mean, I, I get them every now and then, the so-called – not the, the, I forgot the word I was looking for. Trolls. Right. But I grew up on AOL. You can't troll a troll. I'm sorry. You can try to troll me all you want, but I I, I grew up on AOL, so yeah. If you want to talk about, <laughs> I typed slow. If I typed fast, I'd be the worst troll out there. <laughs> My problem is I have fat fingers when I type. <laughs> You guys can tell, hey, that's Joe. He has fat fingers. He's okay. We get you what you mean. <laughs> if I'm on my phone, my phone's drunk all the time, so the typing's always bad. So when I'm in the chat, it's you do need a little bit of an intro. Phones are terrible. The worst thing they ever could have done was... My typos are bad. Autocorrect and predictive text is the worst function ever on a cell phone. Oh, autocorrect. It's like, you don't even know me. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, really. Yeah. Try to type in one word. It's like, is this what you meant? No, that is not what I meant. I meant what I typed on the screen. Stop trying to mess with me. It does that a lot, especially with gardening and sewing terms. I find certain jargon. It keeps trying to change it to other stuff. And then it's like, well, this makes absolutely no sense. And I swear to God, sometimes it changes it after you hit send. Mm -hmm. Like you type it normally and then you hit send and then it changes the word. And it's like, what? And I have a few and it's changed. I'm not going to tell you what it changed to, but nasturtiums are one that if I try to type nasturtiums in a chat, it autocorrects it to something else. <laughs> Probably not a good word. <laughs> and it's not a word I have ever typed before. So I don't know why everyone's like, oh, you must use that word a lot. I don't. I'm like, I've never typed that before on my phone. Um, I don't know why it goes there. 
and it's very frustrating. Yep. Autocorrect and predictive text, the two worst functions. I have to disable those things because otherwise, I mean, I'm fine with the autocorrect every once in a while, but the predictive text, that just kills everything. Well, I find sometimes a predictive text is like, no, I'm trying to be nice here. I mean, I, mean, I don't want to be nice. Like, stop it. Stop Dad. censoring me. So let's see what AI says about Brampton Gardner. Let's check this out. Let's see if this works. Terrifying. Who is Brampton Gardner on YouTube? I'm terrified right now. Please tell me you tested this out ahead of time. <laughs> nope. Uh, it's repeating everything you just said. Hold on. I got to do this over. Hold on. Hold on. It says, I'm terrified. I'm terrified right now. Please do not. <laughs> it's not wrong. It's not wrong. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let's try this again. Uh, it's not going to, it's not going to work. It's, it has recorded. Oh no. Hold on. Oh, I, I know what the AI is going to say about the uh, Brampton Gardner. It, it's going to say she does not grow radishes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to watermelon radish. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's funny. I actually picked those up just for random purposes, and then you guys tell me that there's a uh, thing out there for watermelon radishes for uh, for the grow challenge. So I was like, well, I guess I'm killing two birds with one stone then. Okay, I'm going to try this out one time. Just be quiet for one second. Who is Brampton Gardner on YouTube? Who is Brampton Gardner on YouTube? Uh, no, hold on. Got to do it again. It seems there might be some confusion regarding the name Brantley Gardner. <laughs> the search results. Brantley? Brantley? That's a new one. Hold on. Who is Brampton Gardner on YouTube? We got it. Brampton Gardner is a YouTube channel focused on gardening, particularly in a suburban garden in Canada, Zone 6A. The channel features various gardening-related content, including live streams, garden tours, and gardening tips. The person behind the channel shares their journey and experiences with gardening, aiming to help others with their gardening projects. Carrot 1, a carrot 2, carrot 3. You're, carrot. you're all about carrots, son. <laughs> Artificial and all. Carrot my... <laughs> You're all about carrots. Who knew? <laughs> wow. I'm going to have to take this channel in a whole new direction. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. If, uh... <laughs> Who knew about this? It's not going to ask me another question, is it? Who is Fox and Outdoors on YouTube? Nope. Who is Fox It Outdoors on YouTube? Fox It Outdoors is a YouTube channel created by a content creator who is passionate about bushcraft, camping, cycling, fishing, gardening, and small-time homesteading. The channel has 539 subscribers and features 121 videos, including live streams, garden tours, and updates on gardening projects like trellis construction and luffa growing. The creator also shares quick updates, such as a small carrot harvest, Carrot 1A. 
If you're interested in these outdoor activities and homesteading, this channel might be a great resource for you. I've done the carrot one, so that one actually makes sense, considering I'm still pulling out carrots from last season. <laughs> I don't know, Cliff, when they said small, small carrots, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I don't know what a luffa is. <laughs> I thought it was like luffa. What? I think it's a what are you growing over there? <laughs> it's all about carrots. Weed. Not those kind of carrots. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, we're going to go back to our wheel quick. We got, uh... Apparently... At least you didn't say my carrots were small. <laughs> small carrot harvest. So it took one some... of my videos. So we're giving away this yarn first. This is our first yarn. Our second yarn. Ice cream! And then we got, uh... Herbal handbook. And then we're going to go give away some seeds. So let's get to the wheel. Hope you guys enjoyed that. There's 92 people listening in our live right now. That's from all of us combined. So let's shuffle. Good luck, everyone. Good luck. <laughs> Froggy, I don't think so. Froggy is here, but this is a great uh, gift that she's lurking. It's perfect. Look, it is perfect if she's here. Okay, now we got the pink ice cream yarn. Let's see. If anybody sees Froggy, let me know. I'm looking. Hey, Thrifty won. I think that's the second time she won today. Yes, it is. Yeah, second. Wow. So. Two-time winner. Winner, winner, yarn dinner. So Thrifty won before the book, I believe. Yeah, she won a book, and now she won the yarn. So congratulations, congratulations Thrifty Adventures. But is she still here? Need to know she's still here. So congratulations. You hear looks look like you're the big winner of the night. And uh, now we got another herbal handbook. Herbal handbook. Oh, yep, there she is. Get frosty on. You say he's gonna post his money. Woohoo! Jane Doe! Jane! Woohoo! I haven't seen Jane all night. <laughs> Not at all, right? <laughs> oh, there she is. There she is. Congratulations to Jane right Doe. There. Congratulations. So that is awesome. Awesome. Awesome stuff. So just want to make sure. What did Jane post? Did Jane post anything yet, though? I know she's there. She's in the chat. So you guys, I seen uh, before in the chat there was little. We have a lot of people trying to protect this chat, and I really appreciate that. I guess it needs to be protected. I guess yes, people are out trying to get trying out. They're going out to get me, and so for some reason I have no idea why. But uh, I can't for the life of me figure it out. You're always upbeat and super happy and excited and always friendly on here. And so, we're gonna like to well. and so you're the reason why this program keeps on going. And uh, I really appreciate that. But uh, yeah, Jane is here. So congratulations to Jane. And you got the book. And I, I just hope it's not because I give out a lot of stuff. Hopefully it's because you guys get great information. And, uh, and everybody, you know, this is great. This is us being all together, learning how, you know, Learning how to grow with each other, learning, uh, trying to give out the best information we can. You know, it's an educational channel, but it's also a, a place you could go, have some wine, 
enjoy it. Hopefully, it makes you smile a little bit and laugh. No one told me I could have wine. Oh, you could always have wine on my show. <laughs> we could talk about Cliff. Be careful, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> we could talk about Cliff growing small carrots. <laughs> and hey, we could talk about they may be little ones, but I get you'll be, you'll be lucky we're talking about small carrots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just, I, just, I, I just love this community so much. I mean, without you guys, I definitely wouldn't be here. And uh, I know if there was like twenty people in the chat, I would not be doing this anymore. <laughs> it just because I got, uh, you know, my son has been the healthiest. I'm not around my wife. I work nonstop, and I know I need to spend more time with my family. So I appreciate you guys being here because this is my chance to just not just give back, but to have fun and just like breathe a little bit. You know, everybody, yeah. I, I don't, I, I wish I could have a chance. If I had a drink, it will be right now because it's the only time I have to. Uh, my Fridays, I wake up at six. I get home at four in the morning. So it's 22 hours of work. <laughs> you know, it's just nonstop. And it's just what I do. You know, it's what I need to do to live in New Jersey. Uh, it's not easy. Um, so when I do this show and I do my Tuesdays and Thursdays, that's my free, it's my free time, you know. And uh, I appreciate you guys being here and making me feel good about myself. And you know, it just makes me breathe. So I appreciate that. So, uh, guys, we are at two hours. Um um, so, wow, that was a quick two hours. Time flies when you have a panel. <laughs> well, it was a lot of fun. It was, this is a great live. This was a lot of fun. Um, on Tuesday, if you guys can make it, we're, we're talking about pollinators. So uh, it's really, it's going to be, really cool. it's something that we, I've never really talked too much, too much about. Flower so, power. You know, I'm all about the pollinators, beneficials. Yeah. And that's what it's going to be exactly about. So if you guys can make Grow Big TV Tuesdays and Thursdays, 8 o'clock. And we, it's going to be a really awesome live on Tuesday. And when we have the guy that worked who lived next to Micah Rowe, the guys, you're going to love that live when it happens. Oh, my God. It's And we have also Gary Pilarcher coming on and several other big names coming on in the next two months. So uh, you guys are going to love it. So... You guys, everybody in the chat, guys, should stay on for a couple seconds. And uh, I'll hope to see you guys on Tuesday. Love you guys, and thank you for everything. Have a good, have a good night. Bye, folks.